first would like to ask you about, you know, what motivated you to get a band together and uh, do shows in Japan? Well, um, all along I'd intended to, um, I, I, I would have liked to go on making records. When I stopped, ma when I when I stopped playing, when I sort of dropped out, um, kind of went on an extended sabbatical. Uh, it was because I I I I uh, just kind of come to the end of my endurance. <laughs> but, uh, what did you have to endure? Um, uh, rock and roll life is very um, strenuous, <laughs> you know, psychologically, physically, you know, emotionally, um, and I'm I'm a weak guy. <laughs> you like had a tour and stuff. Yeah, being on the road all the time, going, living in hotels, having to deal with idiotic club owners and um, do interviews all the time, that kind of thing. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I always like to throw that in, just yeah. to like, like make just people uncomfortable, you know. Here's Hopkins, <laughs> that, that was about 82, though. No, actually, no, the, um, the last time I played was in 85. Oh, you said? Yeah. No, oh, no I didn't. Those, the last two or three years were kind of... Uh, kind of erratic mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I'd always wanted I always like making records I mean that's the you know I mean I, I won't I like making music and, and making records um, and I, I you know I, I regained my strength and revived and um, got this very seductive offer to come to Japan. <laughs> I thought that would be um, the ideal way to uh, uh, sort of ideal kind of trial run because it's gonna it's it's, it's comfortable and I like Japan and um, and you know it's a sort of out of town tryout. <clears throat> um, so it's kind of your what, this is like, your sounding board here. I mean, this, yeah, is, yeah. Like, this is your way it's of getting like a, back into like it. A, mm -hmm. Huh. Um, a good big question is, what were you doing during your sabbatical? Right. Can I ask you something? I was out of curiosity. When you're interpreting, usually, the does the person to whom you're addressing questions usually. Look at you or the interviewer. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. You guys know, most, people will look, most people will look at me, although some people will make a point of like, right, right. like looking at the, at, the, at the questioner because uh, that seems to be more polite. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, you, you know, you feel free to look at it. Like, I'm just curious. Uh, um, what was I doing? Writing mostly. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I edit a literary magazine in New York. I keep meaning to bring those down when I do interviews because I brought some along to show, but I always forget. Um, and um, I'm working on a novel, and I have I have two books coming out this year. I've been writing a lot. That's mostly what I've done. I, I wrote a movie script that I want to direct this year. Um, so yeah, that's how I've sort of recouped. Hmm. That's that's how you're making a living, editing and writing. Uh, yeah, writing, getting readings. I regularly give readings in the U.S. for my writing. No, during the interim, you've kind of been uh, molded into a uh, punk hero of sorts uh, over here. You know, I mean, you've kind of been out of the, the limelight, <clears throat> but, you know, since you're uh, conspicuous in your absence, people have sort of built up this Richard Hell legend, uh, you know, the, the, the godfather of punk. Um, he's asking, is this the same in America? Well, uh, among the aficionados, you know, but... Um, 
it's hard for me to say because I haven't been out, you know. I mean, I'm really... Books keep appearing with my name in it, and... Uh, um, It's not really very interesting, though. I mean, it's, you know, it's so, um, I, I don't, I don't believe in history. <laughs> like, I think it's, uh, you know, um, I think... It sounds like, you know, it's, it's irrelevant, but, no, I mean, it's not. Well, it really, it's, it's, it's sort of academic, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, um, I, you know, I mean, naturally, I've, I always, you know, one, one likes to, uh, uh, make one's presence felt, you know, um, but it, it's, it's, I just I don't, I don't I don't really have much of a sense of it. I'm just sort of getting a sense of it by coming out again now. I mean, um, if it was the same thing as say, I see. I, I just don't know whether people are um, are are you know deriving from what I did what I intended it, it you know the effect I intended it to have I, I just you know it's, I don't know I, 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 uh, I think people are reading between the lines when they shouldn't be well it's uh, I don't I I don't. I'm not. I'm not like a. I'm not like a, a social leader. No, I'm, I'm. I'm. I think of the, you know, the works that I've produced as being. Um, uh, sort of anti leadership. <laughs> no, they're more. They're more advocating. Um, uh, the 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 rejection of leaders. So you know, I, I kind of have mixed feelings about being thought of as. It's the head of the pack. Yeah. Yeah. It's more like you know, trying to do something very individualistic, and now you're being labeled as uh, part of a big group. Yeah, like you know, it's like a leader of a movement. So, uh -huh. you know, that's sort of the opposite of what I'm about, you know. Yeah, right, right. Well, that's an old... You know, apparently, the, the, when the tickets went on sale for your uh, shows here, apparently they sold out in like, like a half an hour. Obviously, uh, you know, it's, it's a rather telling uh, uh, fact there in terms of uh, your influ influence you wielded. I mean, you're not exactly an actor performer in the sense that you haven't been releasing albums or, or tour, touring or anything. So to sort of sell out like that shows that obviously somebody somewhere is latching on to your message. Well, uh, that's pleasing. <laughs> Did, I mean, had you expected that? Well, I, you know, I, I've been getting feeders from Japan for a long time, and I, and, 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 I, I, uh, I, I, you figure you, when you haven't played in five, six years, there's bound to be some interest. Let's see if they still buy tickets the next trip. <laughs> uh, um, I don't know what to make of it. You know, I'm just out there doing my best and seeing. Uh, you know, I mean, none of it's very real. Uh, I mean, uh, um, 
you know, I'd like to be able to have the means to, um, to to uh, go on producing work at, at the rate I'd like. You know, I mean, making records and. It's very expensive to make right, records, you know. It's, it's very expensive to make movies, which is the other thing I, I'm interested in doing. Um, so you need to be popular in order to to continue working. You know? I mean, part of the reason I stopped making records was because um, at the scale that I was operating, <clears throat> I had to work way too hard to uh, continue doing it, you know, I mean, I had to be out on the road, you know, month after month after month, and it wasn't worth it, <clears throat> um, so, but I don't know, what's, what's the point we're getting at? <laughs> well, just, you know, obviously, yeah, a lot of people are in tune with what you were doing, and what you've done in the past, so, I mean, uh, there's some sort of a force you've created, you know, and, um, Obviously, you know, people who, who weren't around at the time to buy the records or listen to stuff are listening to it now. They're, they're hearing it somehow and latching on to it. So I guess there's sort of a universe, universal quality to it. And that's why I guess you've been sort of built into this so-called punk hero. Although, I don't think punk really does justice to the actual genre, you know, the genre of music you do. But still, you've been kind of given that label. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what's my reaction? Yeah, so what's your reaction? <laughs> no, I think the, the original thing you want to know is, is, is the same thing happening elsewhere? Um, I don't know, see, because I, I just, I've, I've just said no for all these years. Mm -hmm. You know, when I've, there's been any kind of yeah. feeler about if I'm interested in, you know, I mean, I get, I get sort of, you know, tentative offers, you know, regularly. Um, we'll see what happens, you know, now that I'm back out, you know. Uh, we'll see, I don't know. I mean, in America, I mean, I know there's less awareness of me in America than anywhere else. There's more in all of Europe and in Japan, um, uh, America is, is a, dip, uh, a different story because it's so massive. Um, so you know, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not really aware. I've been sort of, you know, uh, uh, just behind locked doors for yeah. these years, mm -hmm. and we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> People that's not that comfortable with being popular, you know. I mean, um, I tend it tends to make me um, try to uh, um, it tends to make me more offensive. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if, if, if I'm too well liked, you know what I mean? Yeah. This is one of the reasons why you know you kind of gain this exalted status here. Uh, is that, uh, the I think this is really being exaggerated. I mean. I see these magazines, you know, and I, I can, you know, I might have a little, uh, it might be a little classified ad in the back that mentions a bootleg or something, you know, but it's not as if, you know, I'm... Yeah, I mean, you're not going to, you know, uh, compete with Bruce Springsteen for, uh, you know, uh, a fan series. Right? But even, even less than that, I mean, it, uh, but anyway... No. Okay, we'll grant it for the time being. Yeah, but he was uh, saying that it was the fact that we only had kind of like bits and pieces of information on you. Mm -hmm. So we kind of like to set the, set the record straight here. We can go back and kind of trace the career there, just briefly. Kind of go over briefly. He was saying, first of all, in 71, you like 
formed the Neon Boys? The well, that was more like 73. 73? Yeah. But that was your first, like, real band? Uh, viable. But even that was more of a phantom. <laughs> uh, I mean, we never appeared live. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that came from the only tape we ever made on a little four-track machine in somebody's basement in in Brooklyn. Um, when, because we had, weren't able to find the second guitar player that we wanted to uh, to, to complete the band, um, we would we were disbanding um, and we wanted to make a we wanted to record just for the record so to speak the um, material that we'd written um, which amounted to you know six or seven songs uh, so we went into this studio that we found advertised in the back of a newspaper looking for the cheapest place we could find just to just to you know um, have a, a record of the work we had done to, um, and uh, we, you know, we went in there and taped, I think, six songs, and that's the entire output of the Neon Boys. The basement tape. <laughs> we were in high school together. Was that right? Who was uh, doing the club circuit in New York back then when you guys were in high school? Like what kind of facts were you aspiring to? Well, we came to New York from high school. I, we weren't in high school in New York. Um, but um, uh, you mean when the Neon Boys existed? Is yeah. that what you're talking yeah. about? Well, I mean, obviously when you guys got together and were like, you know, we're playing music together, there were certain bands and you try to looking up to or Well, the only interesting bands around at the time that played in New York were the New York Dolls, the Modern Lovers, who were from Boston. Um, <clears throat> that's it. <laughs> it was a very, uh, it was a very, um, uh, dull period. It's, it's I mean, that's sort of what we were reacting against, you know, it was, um, the music there in the early 70s was kind of stadium rock, you know, uh, um, this really inflated, you know, Emerson Lake and Palmer type of thing. Yeah. Bombastic you know. um, stuff. Yeah. Uh, really pretentious and just uh, pompous, meaningless. You know, um, decadent. <laughs> um, and. Uh, so yeah, the, the 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 dolls and the modern lovers were the only bands of any interest in when when in, the, in that period, in the early seventies, in the clubs, nothing else happening. You know, everybody else was like uh, just obvious, imitative, imitative junk. <laughs> So the Neon Boys evolved into television? Mm -hmm. yeah. How did that come about? Well, um, we, you know, we, we were restless, you know, because the Neon Boys seemed really promising, but we spent a year trying to find the uh, guitar player, and um, when we broke up, uh, it was, you know, it was really frustrating because we had all these ideas um, and uh, ambitions, you know, but um, 
we just weren't able to find the fourth member, member of the band. And um, so Tom and I were working in the same um, bookstore. And uh, there was another guy working there who um, said he'd met a guitar player who might work out. <coughs> and uh, we auditioned the guy, and uh, he seemed competent and especially important, submissive. <laughs> uh, and that was Richard Lloyd, and um, so we were able to start a band. Hmm. Why did I eventually leave television? Well, we got a lot of attention really quickly, and um, egos came into play. <laughs> um, uh, everybody thought they were the reason that we got the attention. <laughs> That's a pretty common story. <laughs> Well, I know, yeah, yeah. Off my own. yeah. We all we all know that you were the reason for that. <laughs> <laughs> Television it, was the best band in the world. Um, but Tom thought that I was because I was not really competent bass player. I was, you know, and that there that was no secret. I mean, I just was very rudimentary yeah. bass player and. But that, for me, was part of the um, beauty of it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, part of the whole... That's what sets you apart from the other bands. You got a lousy bands. <laughs> <laughs> the message was, anybody can do it. Uh, you know? I mean, for me, uh -huh. that was a really important part of the message. Uh -huh. uh, uh, but, and, you know, I would place a di different interpretation on his criticism of bass playing. Um, <laughs> but anyway, and, and also just my sort of style on stage, he really wanted to kind of <coughs> suppress me, you know. He, he, he didn't want me moving. He, he, uh, it just became very tense. Um, so I broke off. We both sang. I sang my my songs. He sang his songs. Given mm -hmm. that that you joined up with Johnny Thunder, how that come Well, um, Johnny always had an eye for talent. So <laughs> 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 he he picked you out of the crowd. Uh, well, he he. We were sort of, we immediately became like dolls. We sort of rendered the dolls um, history. <laughs> we sort of like, you know, up until we came along, the dolls were the, the um, band to see in New York, you know. Um, and we were very different from them. We were like rejected the like kind of glam rock thing, you know. Uh, um, and he, he used to come around to the CBGBs all the time. I mean, um, and as the dolls kind of um, collapsed, uh, the kind of style we represented was clearly the coming thing, you know. Um, so it just happened to work out. The timing just happened to be perfect. The, he called me the week, uh, one week after I left television, saying, I just left the dolls, let's make a band together. That's how it happened. Now. Never having really 
you know, uh, talk to them. It's, it's kind of hard to uh, for us to uh, to judge what these guys really like. We were saying like, you know, Tom Verlaine and uh, Johnny Thunder seem to be sort of the diametric opposites of one another. Whereas Tom seems rather uh, <coughs> nervous and uh, uh, nervous, or uh, Johnny's more of a flamboyant uh, type person. Hey, astute. <laughs> astute. <laughs> no, I mean this. This. Astute uh, observation. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty much uh, your opinion. Uh -huh. <laughs> she also ended up quitting the Heartbreakers. <laughs> they were both very good bands, you know. And why would you leave the Heartbreakers? Also? Um, it, was, it worked out that uh, in the Heartbreakers, I kind of had the reverse role as I had in television, you know, where, um, you know, I was Tom to Johnny's me, you know, that's what I mean, right? Oh, like, uh, <laughs> no, no, I wasn't, no, 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 I didn't mean I was, not that I was trying to keep him under control, but that I, I wanted to do, um, uh, more what I thought of as more subtle things than Johnny did. He wanted a kind of rock and roll. Pardon me. He wanted more. He wanted rock yeah, and yeah. Roll. It's, it's a very um, and but but it was friendly though. That was yeah. the difference. Yeah. I mean, I didn't. There wasn't any hostility. It was, it was you know the breakup was just a matter of. Um, I mean, I respected him and, and, and appreciated what he did, mm -hmm. but I just wanted to try a, f a little, you know, f more um, experimental kind of um, uh, I was just sort of, I guess, more intellectual than him, which isn't like a, which I don't think is necessarily good, but I mean, it's not. It's, it's not like making a. It's not like I'm making a judgment against him. It's just we do just diverge a little bit that way, you know. Um, uh, I just I, I wanted to have a band that 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 really just followed my kind of vision, you know, um, and, 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 and Johnny just wanted to play classical fashion rock and roll. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe Chuck Berry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or Keith Richards. Or Keith Richards. Yeah. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> uh, that time that you got to go to the Void or that? Mm -hmm. uh, he was saying, that the, the, was the word punk kind of used at that time? <coughs> I use the word, I mean, we all use the punk when, in the early 70s, before punk was applied to the bands the, that we think of now as being punk. Yeah, the pistols and the jam and the clash and all that. Yeah. yeah. Um, was used, in, you know, among my circle, and, you know, in, in, to my knowledge and my experience was applied to the... Um, Garage bands of the late '60s, like the Seeds, uh, the, the West Coast stuff. Uh -huh. um, uh, you said it because I would have thought like the Ramones. That was always punk to me. Yeah, but you, do you know, for instance, that uh, album that Lenny K put together called Nuggets? You, no, no. no, Lenny K. Well, I know Lenny K. Uh -huh. Before he was guitarist for Patty, he was um, he was a rock writer and a. Um, um, a, he, also, he, he, he compiled these anthologies and the, uh, it's, there was this whole um, in the late 60s in America there was this whole um, yeah, it was like Paul Revere and the Raiders is the kind of music like uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know the, the seeds uh Oh, like the, the, the Kingsman. Yeah, yeah, the Kingsman. Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. All that kind of, all that kind of sounds. Yeah, 
um, was punk. Uh-huh. All right. um, but then, Punk Magazine started in New York. Um, in 75, I think it first came out. Um, that covered all the CBGB's bands. And that's where the term came to be applied to that genre. Uh, I didn't know yeah. that you were yeah. long. Fairly long. And it was a it was a great little magazine. It was a it was a fanzine. It was a, uh, had a lot of cartoons. The people in in for instance there was a um, in seventy six there was a Fumetti. You know what a Fumetti is? It's um it's uh, like a comic book but with photos. <laughs> You haven't seen these? They don't have them in Japan? I would think they would. Yeah, it's instead of having um, drawn panels, uh-huh. they're photos with word balloons huh. coming out of the mouth. Uh-huh. Fumetti is Italian, I think that's where it originated. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and in 76, there was a Fumetti called The Legend of Nick Detroit. Um, that was an issue of Punk Magazine. I was Nick Detroit. Um, and Debbie Harry was... Uh, 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 the Talking Heads and Debbie Harry and uh, um, the Ra- were the Ramones in it? The Ramones or something? I don't know. I don't know. David Johansson was in it. Uh, um, this is an example of an issue. Kind of, they, they were, it was a wild little magazine um, that combined um, sort of a cartoon culture and rock and roll called Punk Magazine and it was it was well known in New York at the time and um, Malcolm sort of imported it to London too and um, that's how the that's how that's where the word punk came to be applied to that yeah yeah, yeah. so obviously there was no real awareness of your guys you know uh, being part of a punk movement, but had you thought you were, you were starting something? You were like the, the beginning of some sort of a, a movement or a role in it? Yeah, well, I think it was intended. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, we aim to um, suggest a an alternative, you know, and, and, uh, you know, uh, sort of consciously constructed this whole, uh, comprehensive <coughs> style, you know, from, um, a way of playing to a way of acting to a way of dressing, you know, that, that, Yeah, it was deliberate. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, uh, a little uh, anecdotes that sort of contributed to your so-called uh, legendary status is uh, you're using orange juice to spike your hair. Uh, beer. Beer. Okay. <laughs> 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 do, you, do you think you were the first one to do that? Spike the hair? Yeah, spike your hair. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 Although, of course, so many of us, you know, given to sort of Malcolm McClure and uh, credit for kicking the whole thing off, but I guess uh, he borrowed rather liberally from uh, what was going on in New York. Yeah, yeah. No, he, he acknowledges it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Lately, he didn't then. <laughs> <laughs> So doesn't that make you the, uh, the godfather of punk then? I yield to Iggy. Uh-huh. <laughs> Did you have any ties directly with London at all? Pardon me? Did you have any direct ties with London or what's happening in London? Well, how do you mean? 
Like uh, the Jackson performer, do you have friends? Do you have friends there among the musicians who start, who were developing punk style at that time? No, except for Malcolm. I mean, uh, Malcolm. Had you known him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He came. To, he hung out at CBGBs. He, he managed the dolls for the like the last year. And was, yeah, that's when we began. Yeah. Was there all that kid? Yeah. Yeah. So it must have been about 75? 74, 75. Yeah, yeah. yeah. when he was doing all this. It was 1974. He was doing all the, the, had him dressed up in the mouth? Yeah, yeah, all in the red leather <laughs> and a big communist flag. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. And then he, you know, when he was on that jaunt, you know, he <laughs> hung out at CBGB's and he, he, he asked me to come to London to start a band, you know, and when I refused, and, he wanted me to be the lead singer for the Clash. Mm -hmm. right, when, he, when he went back to London, he said, he wrote me a letter saying, I have a great idea, and I met these kids, um, and I, I refused. Mm -hmm. Because he was like a, it's, it's a really odd, I don't, he wanted, to have rule with this, you know, fascistic iron hand, you know, which is, you know, seeing what happened with the Sex Pistols, you know, is pretty ironic, you know. I mean, they were definitely out of control. <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, I didn't want to be, I didn't want a den mother, you know. Um, but yeah, and that's all, that's all, uh, established, I mean, uh, that was the sequence of events. Yeah. <laughs> Blank generation was sort of, uh, was seen as an anthem of sorts, I guess, uh, sort of symbolized the, the, the times. Uh, what did you have in mind when you wrote it, though? <laughs> Did you have something completely in mind? Uh, ambiguity. <laughs> if I had in mind. I'm drawing a blank. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, did, did you, were you trying to define what was going on though? With, with, you know, you did, you did say there was uh, uh, consciously a movement in mind. You guys were sort of trying to create uh, something new. But it, it had blank generation had nothing to do with that? Yeah, I should, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not asking you to pop a lot of people's bubbles in. I mean, just wondering what you had in mind when you wrote the song. I was saying, let me out of here before I was even born. Hmm. <laughs> so, That's what I was saying. Youthful angst. As they say. <laughs> Uh, as they say, uh, <coughs> I just wanted a pink Cadillac and a lot of girlfriends. Rebel without a clue. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we really shouldn't be reading that much into it. You seem to uh, have, you know, have your way with it. Yeah. yeah. Take it with a grain of salt. Though. Um, I think it's more significant than the Declaration of Independence. Hmm. That's interesting. Hey, that, hey, that makes great copy. <laughs> <laughs> we, now, we now have our title for the interview. <laughs> nah, come on. What? <laughs> <laughs>
But I mean, if I if I could tell you what it meant when I wrote it, I wouldn't have to write it, would I? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I mean, the point of writing it was to say what I meant, and I put a lot of work into it. Uh, Pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> self are you still doing it now? I mean, are you, are you going to be doing it? Yeah, we'll do it. Yeah, you'll do it. Hmm. So, um, uh, it was not too long after that like, Blondie, the talking head sort of went big time. Seems like you kind of just sort of, at least it, as far as he's concerned of being here in Japan, you sort of faded from sight. Were you doing just mainly small venues? Uh, uh, there was an album in 82, or did not do The Destiny Street in 82. Uh, other than that, I mean, you seem to sort of fade it from our view over here. What was going on? Um, I just guess I wasn't as ambitious as they were. Mm -hmm. You just didn't want to do it. Uh, like I said, I, I'm I'm a guy who kind of resists being too popular. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's also Pete Davies, you know. Well, you know, even if you hadn't wanted to go big time, we would have expected at least a couple more albums, though. <laughs> <laughs> there weren't very many records. Um, if I could have done them entirely on my terms, I would have gone on making records. Um, I mean, I would have liked to make more records, as long as but I'm just a neurotic, um, uh, demanding, difficult guy. <laughs> and, um, and I wasn't making enough money for any record company for them to you know, accept that. Yeah. A question about what kind of music you're, you're doing now. I guess you did a, a, some work with the Neville Brothers in 84? Not really the Neville Brothers. I played with uh, uh, the drummer in the meters okay. when I was in. Um, <laughs> New Orleans. <laughs> but I mean, how, how about the type of music you're doing now? What? Well, we'll be we're doing a couple of new songs on the tour, um, and some radical rearrangements of some other that. Um, uh, you have to hear it. You can't like describe. Uh, I, I guess the, the un, unasked question is: are, are you just are you know reviving old stuff, or are you actually trying to be a viable contemporary act? Well, to come to Japan, we pretty much put together a retrospective. You know, I mean, um, it's it's the classic kind of tour set where it's you know. Um, two or three songs from the, each album, um, uh, some obscure and unreleased stuff that, that um, isn't recent, some off-the-wall covers and some brand new songs, you know, but um, I wouldn't come to Japan and play, you know, after never having played here, and only play things that nobody knew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. well, the guys have done it. <laughs>